नमस्कार एंड लेट्स बिगिन अंदर स्पिरिचुअल टॉक टुडे टुडे आई बी डिस्कस की डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ माया इन हिंदू फिलोसॉफी माया एज द एंशंट ऋषिज और इवन द सेंट्स हैव अगेन एंड अगेन सेड refers to our reality the world around us which is which this stress is not so real as we think it is but rather maya loosely translated in english means illusion so the world around is like an illusion it's not that it is an illusion but it's like an illusion now often when we think of uh, this concept of maya in hinduism we think of the film matrix or the 13th floor uh, but it's not that it's completely an illusion and we are in a state of dream and the life that we are leading is completely a dream it's not like that there is of course some reality to it but the concept of maya the concept of this world being like an illusion is that when we see look at it from the perspective of even science and physics like the relativity of time and space uh the dimensions like think of an ant the ant looks at the world in a completely different way the ant wouldn't be able to conceive of the a whole human body or uh, even a bird or a dog or a cat the paw of a dog would be like an mountain like a mountain to the ant and it it is beyond his his understanding to grasp and know the whole totality of a cat or a dog the tail or the paw or even a little part of the dog or a cat would be like a huge thing for an ant so also for us when we look at several natural occurrences around us in the world uh, which science can't explain maybe we are looking at those things in a very in a very like in our own very small kind of way the huge occurrences the solar systems the planetary systems and the so that is so much in the world in the uh, cosmos around which science yet can't explain or can't grasp these things to me i feel like it's because we are such tiny things and we are trying to understand things which are huge in their own way it is only when an ant becomes a human being we understand trees and human beings and everything the other animals and plants the scriptures not only hindu scriptures but all scriptures all ancient scriptures around the world all saints and seers around the world have described the planets as living beings jupiter saturn mars these were these were living entities to them now we don't see them as living entities so we can't say that they were lying it might be that we don't perceive them as they actually are and even uh, mountains and rivers were 
perceived as living entities which we don't and we think that these are like they were ancient and they kind of personalized everything is it so really or maybe it's our perception that is limited and we need to broaden our mind and look at things in a in a very open minded way and when we spiritually progress and when we grow into that level you know in a superhuman level to a superhuman level we understand at that point of time then that in reality it is so like there is nothing in this universe which is dead or in organic and just matter consciousness permeates everything everything is conscious so it is only how we perceive it whether we perceive it or not everything has its own vibration has its own frequency has its own way of expressing itself uh, and we we think that even on earth we think that oh human beings are the only intelligent creatures and as if uh, dogs and cats and ants insects these have hardly any intelligence in them yet we are surprised and uh, so shocked when uh, for the first time we get to know that even ants have such a well uh, social order such a systematized social order they have their pets they have their soldiers and king queens this and that everything so intelligence and consciousness is everywhere it is only we who have to open our doors and perceive it so maya maya is it's not that this world is an illusion but that the world has a reality which is much more vaster and higher than we have yet understood so that was what i think that is what i think and maya also refers to the transient nature of this world it is kind of an illusion or it is like a dream because it is it is ever changing the way we know it and our lives are so small even in a span of time compared to earth is will live on for millions of years and a human one human life is just for a few years compared to the life on life of earth the life of rivers and mountains so even from the perspective of time it's so changing like supposing we had a life which lasted for a thousand years we would have seen the rise and fall of the roman empire we could have seen the rise and fall of the egyptian civilization the harappan mohenjodaro civilization uh, huge civilizations they rose to power they flourished for a span of time and then they are no longer there upon the face of the earth so if we think from a higher perspective if we look at things from a higher perspective from a higher standpoint wouldn't it be like a dream to us like the sudden coming up of an empire and flourishing and then just vanishing away uh, in time wouldn't it seem like a dream so when the seers and the saints when they perceived this space and time because they are relative when they perceived it in their meditation they are perceiving perceiving 
all of the past and all of the future at one point of time at the present moment at that time of course it would seem like a dream and when we see that we have led several thousands of past lives and we have yet more incarnations in front of us and that this is one point of time of the soul incarnating again and again and again and evolving in its own way towards its source when the seers see that when spiritual aspirants understand that realize that it surely seems like a dream the life this world this everything seems like a dream it's not that it is a dream but it seems like a dream because it's transient it's relative it's and we are just a tiny speck in an ever changing vast swirling pool of existence so that's what maya is and the more we understand this concept of maya not through intellectually reading books or uh, through verbally discussing with people or listening to things not like that through our own meditation practices and realizing and evolving ourselves the more we understand this concept of maya the more we get detached from this world we start enjoying the world in a more detached kind of way we are no longer so upset by our tiny small life happenings like oh my car broke down or there was a fire in the house or something happened and somebody passed away we know that come on it's life and death we are will be born again and again and again and it's a continuing process and everything is fine it's just it's the way of life it's always changing and is the change that we need to enjoy we don't we shouldn't just stick to one thing we can't say oh this this rose in my garden is so beautiful beautiful and i don't want it to wither away i this i just want this rose in my garden to be in its peak of beauty for a month or so it can't be it's roses would bloom they'll wither away and new flowers will come in my garden so it's life things would come will enjoy things would go away and we'll have new things always so it's will start enjoying life and without attaching ourselves to it without being sorrowful about our losses but always excited because we are always going to enjoy something new always so this concept of maya is for me a very important concept and it's a concept uh it might be uh, that hinduism gave the concept but then it's well known now all over the world and everybody knows uh but the thing is that we have to understand it in a proper way not that this world is an illusion but that it's like an illusion and the more we understand it i think the more we'll be able to enjoy life and evolve keep evolving ourselves so that's it that was what i thought thank you for listening to me namaskar have a great day and have a great life and let's all evolve to the best versions of ourselves and towards a peaceful making uh, this world a very Uh, towards a more peaceful place let us all strive towards it let us make this world a very beautiful and peaceful place for all of us namaskar